They are the lowest ranked side still left in the FA Cup and what a run it has been to this stage. They have knocked out um, a team above them in the football pyramid in every round and in doing so have created history by becoming the first team in, in the FA Cup to eliminate five teams in higher divisions than themselves. It's been quite an incredible run and they don't want it to end there. They do head to high-flying Brighton tomorrow then at the Amex in the quarterfinals and I'm really pleased to say that joining us, taking time out of his preparations, joining us right now, it is the Grimsby Town boss, Paul Hurst. Paul, good morning to you. How are you? Hi, Paul. Morning, uh, Natalie. Morning, Tony. Very good. Uh, looking forward to his trip and then the game will, will soon be upon us. Um, Paul, after you won Southampton, how have you felt about, because you've, you've played three other games, you've won a couple of them, drawn and, and lost one, says four games there. Have you been yep. really pleased with the performances? Because it's, it's very difficult to get such a great result and then suddenly you'll get back to your feet down on earth again, don't mm. you? Where you're thinking, well, where, where did the Southampton performance go? Yeah, it's it's been tough, but credit to the players in general. I think they've done well and picked up some some good points for us. We had seven points um, in quick succession. The, the Carlisle game was a, was a big ask, a change the team around, and they started well. Uh, but in the end, we we just fell short. No disgrace. They're having a fantastic season. Uh, but probably the main one was Sutton this week when it's so close to the game, and to go there and win against a team that were nine unbeaten. A fantastic home record. I was delighted with with the players, and and that's credit to them. Mm. Uh, how do you put into words, Paul, this cup run that you've been on? You've already made history, like I mentioned there, by putting out teams in higher divisions above you. You're uh, on your way, or will be on your way to Brighton at some point as well to try and put out another Premier League team. How on earth do you put this into words? What you're doing? I think the word is just unbelievable. <laughs> um, I can't quite believe it myself, and I've said a few times. As first tie in, in the competition, you know, the draw was made and we, we drew the ice ranked team in Plymouth at that stage of the competition. Flying I had watched them, they were fantastic to watch. And I just thought we're not going to be in this competition for very long this season. <laughs> um thankfully I was wrong and <laughs> the players have gone from strength to strength. And and just listening to that commentary there, because obviously you don't get to hear that. Uh, that was a nice reminder of, of that last game and, and listening to the fans because that's what it's about. You know, it's great for the players, of course, and and everyone with the connected with the club, but the fans in particular, you know, over 4,000 there at Southampton, I think four, six uh, there tomorrow uh, wow. with, with the Haddocks and they'll, they'll hopefully have a fantastic time. Paul, tell us about... I've spoke to loads of managers over the years about their team and what they respect about their team. What is it for you that you really have embraced with what they've given you? Is it their, just their effort and their desire to become better? I think it's their honesty uh, and the commitment. And if I, I know we're talking about this season, this FA Cup run, but some of the group were involved in the promotion last year uh, mm -hmm. from the National League in quite, again, that word, unbelievable circumstances with the playoff games, uh, winning an extra time, three times, um, kind of away from home onto an obviously neutral venue in the final. And, and that sort of shone through, I think, in this cup run. You know, we've had to dig deep at times, but I think the majority of the games we've actually deserved to go through. Uh, but they're just good characters, good people, a good group to work with. Of course, you always want more. You know what it's like, Tony. You, mm. you, you're never happy as, as a manager. You kind of get frustrated at times but overall I have to say they, they've given us everything and they'll need to do that again and some uh, in this game against Brighton. But also in terms of League Two it's going well you know as a team newly promoted back in the Football League for some time you know it's going well you're 15th at the moment you're what are you 16th off the bottom two um, yeah. there is what are you you're 11 is it off the top seven something like that so it's it's for your first season back in the Football League, it's going to plan. We, we've done OK. And I think that's <laughs> something, the word OK never sits comfortable with me. Um, and I guess some of these cup performances have shown and, and some league performances that we've had against some of the good teams where I do feel there's a little bit more in, in this team in terms of the as league position. But for a couple of reasons, it hasn't quite happened. And some of those I can live with others. You kind of search for those answers. But overall, it's it's been a, another good season for us with the, the new owners coming in. Uh, they've had two fantastic seasons. And if they keep getting 
success like they've had, I, I'm looking forward to what might happen next year. So um, the town, the fans, <laughs> travelling, the pilgrims coming down in their large numbers. What's it been like in Grisby this week? You can every time you bump into anyone, it's you just see people with a smile on the face. There's a buzz around, and I think going back to your point about the the games that we've had since, no one's sort of talked about any of those games. They've only been interested in the um, in the Brighton game. So you turn up to a game, and you know they're talking about travelling to Brighton, and I'm trying to keep people's feet on the ground. I, th I think you meant Mariners, didn't you, Tony? Yes, I'm laughing. I'm <laughs> laughing to myself because I've just yeah, said to I, Natalie. I, I, I just went... saw that and I, I didn't want to pull you up on it, but I saw you. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I just laughed yeah. at Natalie. When... He's, getting, he's getting, getting his coastal towns mixed up. <laughs> no, Grimsby, the Mariners. <laughs> no, I, but look, it, there's a lot of excitement around, as you can imagine. He's brought some nice spotlight to the football oh, club. Dear. And, you know, that that's sort of great for, for the town as well. You were very courteous. <laughs> very courteous. In, in your, just going to respond and then obviously seeing Casco, I think I've said the wrong thing there, but yeah. as he was whispering to me. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. And, and what's even more incredible as well, Paul, is that you could create further history in by becoming the first side from League Two to reach the FA Cup semi-finals. There have been obviously teams before you that have tried that. Oxford, Bradford, Colchester, Cambridge, for example. They've all tried to reach it, but they've all found that their run has ended at the quarterfinal stage. Do you yeah. think think about history is that something that is even on your agenda or is it just all about just trying to win a game and that's it i think it's trying to go and and compete and try and get a touch of the football with the way brighton play to be honest with you <laughs> uh fantastic team you know getting loads of plaudits and rightly so uh i think for those you know having studied it and you're doing your analysis it gets even more daunting and really respect what they're doing there so yeah i don't think i've afforded myself that thought of, of anything further than than Brighton, mm. that's for sure. I didn't at Southampton, to be honest, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, Paul, just remind your team they've only got one World Cup winner in their team. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's not bad, yeah. <laughs> makes, sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? So. Oh, that's, see, that's the G up you needed, clearly, in, when you go in and just before yeah, you head out. Yeah, the team talk, Tony, tomorrow for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you were just waiting. You're thinking, I just need one more line to finish yeah. my little ste my I statement think, off. I think the players would lose faith in me once I said the uh, pilgrims. Pilgrim. Yes. <laughs> out, get out. Uh, I, yeah, I'm anyway. reliably told there's 280 miles between Grimsby and Plymouth. You couldn't be any further off, really. Yeah, Cass, so but anyhow, yeah, okay. uh, Paul, we, we did mention Plymouth, to be fair. So yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, true. That's easily. True. Yeah, Easily so. done. But look, uh, we do appreciate you taking time out to speak to us because you've got a busy day, no doubt. Are you travelling down today? Yeah, meeting the coach uh, very soon and then we're Happens. training en route before we go to the hotel. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, well, best of luck. Yeah. Hope it all, all goes best, to plan, Paul. Paul. Thank, thanks very much. Nice speaking to you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Great to speak to the Grimsby manager there. Terry, lad, from, eh? Terry from Grimsby. We love our Grimsby. Tell uh, tell uh, Paul that he's doing a fantastic job, uh, job and sometimes belief is stronger than ability he says that's a nice that's another line that Paul could use I love that Terry uh, it's live on Talk Sport you can tune in to the game tomorrow to find out exactly how they fare then Grimsby as they look to create further history and uh, reach the FA Cup semi-finals